Very cool. Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema studio up here at Sundance, Mr. Mark Rico. Um, firstly, congratulations on having Mamado up here. Um, it's obviously been a long gestating process. So what does it feel to kind of actually be just done with it and releasing it to the world? Uh, it's kind of, ner it's extremely nerve wracking. You know, this is something that I've been filming alone and working alone on for so many years. Yeah. That, you know, I haven't really shown it to many people. And it wasn't until a couple months ago that I saw it on a screen bigger than my computer monitor. And what was so, it feeling? Because you're a photographer as well, right? Yeah. So what did that add to the process? And just even if it was just stills, I imagine seeing it on that sort of sized canvas, it would be pretty epic. But having this moving image kind of transpire before your eyes. Incredible. You know, photography is what really brought me to this project. I was traveling around looking for mining towns. Yeah. And then I had worked in video before and studied film. But to then take what I, the work that I did there when I first arrived in terms of photography and then try to translate that into a moving image, it was an incredible experience and also, you know, really difficult. How hard was it just in terms of being a foreigner with a recording device in a small town that has ancient practices, essentially? <laughs> um, what was their response like to you and did you have to clear it through any officials or you just started shooting? I just bought a camera and went there. Yeah. And the first day I went into the mine and found my principal character on that first day. But there's a, you know, there's a really good trick about traveling in Colombia. If you arrive anywhere and you know at least one contact and they can vouch for you, um, then everyone will, will want to know who you are instead of just being suspicious. And so I f before I even arrived, I found who was the community leader. Yeah. And she really became like my grandmother in town. She took care of me. I stayed in her home. She fed me. Um, it was a great experience. The locals are really great people. So how long did you, did you end up staying there for, for six years continuously? Or were you kind of a seasonal visitor every year that would pop up? The first two years, I was more of a visitor. Yeah. Because I was still living in New York. So I would go back and forth, freelance as an editor in New York, save a couple thousand bucks, fly back down, yep. work for a month or two, and then go back. And then I decided I just couldn't tell this story in the way it needed to be told without living with them. Yeah. So packed my stuff up and moved down there. And that was, so I spent living there uh, close to four years. So what was it about this story? Obviously there's um, other stories in other places, whether it's fracking or mining or whatever it is that really like are affecting the people that live on that soil year round. Uh, but corporatization and globalization seems to be kind of removing the locals from the equation. Hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, there's a term called the resource curse and a lot of these places that have incredible natural resources that have still not been tapped typically live in underdeveloped ways, you know, there's not as much education, there's, there's uh, economic problems there as well. And then when you add in a bigger entity coming in that really wants to change that, they're, they're vulnerable communities. Do you think that they're going to benefit at all from having all this money come in, taking the gold from under the hill? That's really the kind of what drove me to make the film is to understand what, how people define progress and who benefits from it and who suffers. Yeah. And so I think there will be people who benefit. And the, really it's kind of looking at where is, is there a balance and, and if not, where do, do the scales tip? Look, Canadians are obnoxiously nice in the main. They have a reputation for nicety. Um, this experience, obviously it's a big Canadian corporation coming in to do the gold mining in Mamato. Mm -hmm. um, and they were receptive of your camera. Yeah. So is that because they're nice and perhaps a little naive or is, or is it because they think that they're really truly providing something for, these, for this area? I think it's a little of both. Because if you believe that what you're doing is ultimately the best thing for these people, then you must be naive in some way. And, but that's not to say that they can't do good things. Right. Um, and I also think that some of them were really waiting to tell their story to someone 
like me that was willing to be there and I was from some place that they understood. Right. Right. So it was their moment to explain why they're here if they have guilt about it or if they ultimately believe that what I'm doing is the best thing for these people. I have the answer for them and I want you to know why I'm doing this. Being in a small town, I assume that after the clock strikes and everyone's off work, that everybody's co-mingling in the same places. So was there ever like hesitancy from you about befriending some of these people on either side of the coin? Oh yeah. Uh, one character is a driller that works for the company. He's a Canadian guy that basically we called him uh, you know, a detached world citizen. He just pops from place to place drilling for companies and then moves on. Yeah. And this was the first really significant presence that I saw in the town. And significant in the sense that he was white and he looked like me, he talked like me. And so I had to film him. You know, he was just incredible as a character. Right. And so that's when I, when the community started seeing me filming him and speaking English, they didn't know what I was saying and why I would want to film this guy. And that's when uh, rumors started that I was a spy for the company. I was collecting intelligence at public meetings and then, you know, giving that intelligence to the company. And that created a really unsafe situation for me. And um, in terms of getting out of that situation, how did you go about re-earning their trust? Did you show them footage? What did you do? Yeah, so two things. Uh, the first, I went back to the community leader and said, I need you to pull counsel of people who run this town and I'm going to show you things. Um, but it was also very del delicate because I still needed to talk to other people who were in favor of this company or actually even work for this company. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did that and I think that that really helped. But also the other thing that I did was I didn't run away. I just stayed and I kept working and I said, I'm not going to be afraid of this. I have to keep shooting. And I think that they just basically understood that. Have you had a chance to show them the completed result? Anybody down there? Not yet. What we're trying to do is first create some buzz here. Yeah. And in many ways that will benefit their story. Um, we're going to try to uh, invite some of the principal characters to some festivals, give them the space to speak. But I think we need to generate the right kind of dialogue first for that to be, you know, to really take advantage of that kind of experience for them. I'd imagine most of them being from such a small place have not traveled too widely. Some of them have never even gone off that mountain. Yeah, so, so that would be an experience in and of itself. Yeah, and it's something that each one of those characters has told me they'd love to do. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, in your travels around that region, choosing that one town, did you then have to let go of something else that was kind of boiling in your mind before you got to Mamato? Sure. Um, you know, traveling around as a photographer and also writing and looking for stories. There's just this endless wealth of, of great places in Latin America. And I'm just ultimately intrigued by the place. So, so you're addicted? Is it well, going to yeah. go back after this one? I'm married it? to a Colombian. I live in Colombia. I, I absolutely love being in Latin America. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming in and spending a few minutes talking about it with us. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much for having me. Cheers.